this is a Ingersoll brand five horsepower air compressor that we use in our shop. The model number is, as you can see, uh, 2340L5-V and all the other information except uh, serial numbers hidden but everything else is there. Okay. Um, we had a pretty bad storm about two weeks ago and uh, since then we have not been able to run the compressor so um, I have been troubleshooting and trying to figure out what the problem could be and uh, I wanted to share with everybody whoever might need this information to help them out as well what I've learned so far there's the breaker box uh, so this one is the breaker that's the information on the box Now this one, uh, this is a three-phase, uh, two-stage, I believe it's a two-stage uh, compressor. I could be wrong on that, I'm not an expert, so um, I think it's two-stage because it has two um, pistons. But again, like I said, I'm, I'm not an expert, so I could be wrong on that so the problem we're having even if I turn this on right now like if I turn it back on and I try to turn the compressor on it will not work we've tried it many times let me show you what's inside here <clears throat> so um, as you can see the fuses are not there I've taken them out and the fuses Uh, these are the fuses that this one uses, and it uses two of them. So what's happening is, uh, if the power is coming from here into here, and uh, I have two good fuses plugged in there, and I try to turn this on, what it's doing is keeps blowing the fuses right there. Um, I've almost gone through the whole box that I got for the you know I have this box came with 10 fuses I only got three fuses left so I just don't want to keep trying until we figure out what exactly the problem is and um, I went ahead and replaced the contactor and also replace the overload re thermal relay. Um, when I put both of those brand new uh, contactor thermal over relay and the brand new fuses in there, um, and when I went to turn this on, I got a spark here and the motor turned turned on just for maybe half a second the motor turned on and then it turned off and I saw a spark here and everything cut off um, so I had somebody here who was a lot more knowledgeable than I was I am um, and they actually told me what they think the issue is uh, and it turned out to be a mistake that I did uh, when I replaced this contactor so I'll show you uh, what it was so 
uh, here's the let me see um, here's the original contactor that I removed so and you can see it's marked original all right you can see everything is the same uh, what I did not realize that the new one that I bought as you can see is a 24 volt 24 volt at 60 Hertz and now if you look at the old one that I took off is actually 208 to 240 volts 60 hertz so that was my mistake so I have already ordered the correct one as soon as it's here I will be swapping that out now in order to swap these out for me what worked was I had to label each one of these wires uh, that I was going to be removing and uh, just to make sure that every single wire goes in the same place um, because if if they don't that's another issue so uh, right now I'm waiting for this contactor to come and uh, I also want to show you uh, you know the original one the coil is what went bad so there's two parts in here so the first part is the contactor so I'll put this over here on the ground so uh, the first part is the contactor and the second part is the coil right there so I want to show you uh, the coil actually how it looks like because once uh, I opened up these two pieces uh, we were able to figure out exactly what the problem is so uh, in order to separate these two pieces uh, there's a, this little latch right here you can just flip it open like that and there's one like a little screwdriver or something and uh, lift it up and it should come out and I'm going to try it with one hand here see if uh, so that side came out right there and you just flip it over and go under here and there we go see how it separates there's this spring right here the, the actual coil is gonna be underneath here so this should come right out right there and look at that condition of that coil so for us for sure that is the problem that is definitely the problem uh, so we have this coil and the contactor on order uh, hopefully we'll be getting that soon and as soon as we get it I'm gonna install that in and we'll go ahead and uh, report back to you guys to see if the compressor actually started working or not so I got the replacement parts right here um, this is the original one with the bad coil that I showed you earlier and um, this one as you can see I could not find one exactly the same um, but to be honest with you this part is good just the coil is bad so I was able to find uh, this with the correct coil that I need so if you notice it says uh, uh, 208 to 240 60 Hertz now if you look at the the old one that we got uh, let me turn it around see 9 to 25 and then it says 208 to 240 60 Hertz so that that number that's faded away is like a 9 to 25 208 to 240 60 Hertz so all I want to do is I want to get the coil off from here and install it uh, just remove this coil and then install it uh, on this and uh, 
put it back and see if it works. So uh, better yet, uh, this one is already there. So I know the contactor is good, but the coil in the back is the one that's burned and it, it's the same situation. This coil burned as well. So what I'm gonna do is uh, get this out and just chain the coil in the back and these two wires and that should be all what I needed to do. And then we can test it out. Uh, we'll put some new fuses right there and we'll try to crank it up, see if it works. Of course, the first thing you wanna make sure that your disconnect is on the off position. And for me, it is off position. And so there's no power going there's no power going to uh, this circuits right here. So uh, there's two screws. Um, what I'm gonna do is uh, remove these two wires. One's labeled A1 and the other one's labeled A2. And of course you can label them anything that you like. So A1 goes to the left and A2 goes to the this one's easy. So there's A2 is out. And uh, let's see if we can get the A1. Okay. A1 is out. And I'm trying to work with one hand here, holding the camera. So, um, at this point, we need to be able to get to these two screws. One is right there in the back, and the other one is right, I don't know if you can see it, but it's, it's all the way in the back. All right, so let's get the first screw out, which is all the way in the back. So we don't lose it. It just fell to the bottom. It's gonna be all the way in. I might just take this uh, thermal overload relay out. I'm gonna take this thermal uh, overload relay out. That I think that will make things a bit easier. In order to take that out, these three, one, two, three, uh, and that should drop. So that's one, two, three. So that should come right out. There we go. I think that will make things a lot easier for us to work. So there's the screw right there at the bottom. I may have to, uh, let's see. I don't think I can do this probably with one hand, so uh, let me try it. So, all right, so this is the replacement coil. I, I I already took it off, and I'm about to put this one back on and see how it goes. I've got all the wires put back together. As you can see, A1 back in its place. A2 got the thermal overload plugged back in. I didn't remove any of the other wires. Uh, now the next thing is we just gotta put these fuses back on and I just wanna make sure uh, the fuses are good. I think one of them is good and the other one's not good. So we're gonna test them real quick. Uh, okay, so I got, it's gonna be difficult for me to test it so I'll just check it. So one of the fuse was bad and one was good. So I got one out of the box, brand new one, and uh, installed both of the fuses. So everything is connected back the way it should be. Uh, I think we're ready to test it. See if, uh, see if it's gonna work. 
All right, here he goes. We're gonna turn on the disconnect. All right, it's on. The next step is just to turn the switch on here. Spent a lot of time on this trying to figure out what the problem was. We had replaced this, the one in the back, thermal overload, the fuses, got all the wiring redone. And as you can see, it is working. So we're back in business. My mechanic's gonna be happy. It goes all the way up to, it should go all the way up to 150. So we're almost reaching 150. I believe that's where the cutoff is. So let's see if it should cut off right there. In just a little bit. Cut off. Perfect. So we're good to go. I'm just gonna put all the covers back up and we're ready to go.